like to ask, does anyone know anyone who has been infected with uh, HIV? Yes. There are a few of you who do. And does anyone know any famous people? Rock Hudson, <laughs> uh, Magic Johnson, Irving, Irving uh, Johnson. Uh, those are two that I am aware of. Uh, there are a couple of fashion designers that uh, Sir came. At one time, HIV or AIDS was considered a death sentence. And now there have been such incredible medical developments to help people who are infected. But what's the key? Not to get infected in the first place. And that's what UMCOR is doing, and that's what our participation does. It's to make people aware, to take the stigma away, and to know there's hope. There's hope. So on December 1st, lifting prayers for all who have been impacted by AIDS, and that people take care of themselves. Our scripture this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew. It's chapter 24, verses 36 through 44. And it seems a little strange to use this, this scripture for the first Sunday of Advent, but the message from Proclaim will help, un, help you understand. The day and the hour unknown. Jesus says no one knows about that day or hour. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son. And not that Son, the Son of God. But only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, <coughs> uh, marrying, giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them away. That is how it will be with the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other will be left. Two women will be grinding at the handmill. One will be taken and the other will be left. <clears throat> Therefore, keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch. He would have kept watch and would not have left his house to be broken into. So you must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. God bless this reading and all those who hear it. May we understand it. Amen. The Christ whose return we are to be alerted to is the same unexpected Christ who walked the earth 2,000 years ago. The one who received sinners and died on the cross. Now today we begin the season of Advent in which we will be preparing to remember and celebrate the Lord's birth at Christmas. And when we start with the words of Jesus's from today's gospel, in those days before the flood, people knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away, so it will be with the coming of the Son of Man. Well, I mean, what does that mean? A little over 2,000 years ago, people in the occupied territories of Judea and Galilee were not expecting the Son of Man to come and be among them. Oh, many of the Jews living there under foreign occupation hoped and longed for the coming of the Messiah. They wanted a victorious warrior and a king like David who would throw off the Roman yoke and make Israel again a world power. 
but no one was looking for the Messiah who actually came. The Son of Man who was born in poverty, who taught us to love our enemies and then died on a Roman cross. So, oh, wait a minute, preacher. You started out with that reading from the 24th uh, chapter of Matthew, and it sounds as though you're saying it's about Jesus' his birth uh, 2,000 years ago. But this isn't the first time you've heard or read that part of the Bible. We know it comes at the end of Jesus' ministry, just a few days before he was crucified. And Jesus is talking about the second coming, not about his birth. So what are you saying here? Well, you're quite right. The reading is part of two whole chapters in which Jesus was pointing to the future and to the end of history. Right after those chapters, the pa passion begins. And frankly, I've often felt that people who put together our lectionary series, that's the way in which I get a, a scripture to read each week. And if you go to many Christian churches, they'll be reading the same scripture the same Sunday. That they put these together, they didn't do preachers any favors, making this the gospel uh, Election for the first Sunday of Advent. I mean, whether theologians or liturgical specialists like it or not, most Christians think that Advent as a time of preparation for Christmas, <clears throat> the time of celebrating Jesus' birth, and starting out talking about the end of the world in this situation, seems kind of strange but I actually wasn't stretching that much by applying what Jesus said about the future to his coming into the world 20 centuries ago. Because Advent means coming. Actually, it's about Jesus' coming to earth, both 2,000 years ago and some point in the future. I mean, Jesus says here, when he returns, people will be going about their day-to-day -day affairs, eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, and won't give a second thought about the possibility of God breaking into the world and bringing history to a close. I recently saw a film that came out in 2009, and it was called 2012. It was a dramatic movie. I mean, really dramatic. And I think the reason why it was, you know, so dramatic, because I don't know if any of you remember the Mayan uh, calendar and the fact that the Mayan calendar was saying the world was coming to an end in 2012. So Hollywood, of course, makes up this movie that deals with the world coming to an end. And pretty much it did in that movie. But they were prepared because they had some arcs. And I don't want to tell you too much more because maybe one day you'll, you'll see it on your TV. But it went on and on. And I'm telling you, it was just horrific. But you ask those people who were in Sri Lanka when the tsunami came, or you ask those people who were in Japan when the tsunami came, are you asked those people who have dealt with these nine point something or another earthquakes, did they think the world was coming to an end? And the answer is yes. You ask somebody who went through the Valley Fire, did they think the world was coming to an end? The answer is yes. You ask somebody who went through the Clayton Fire, did they think the world was coming to an end? The answer is yes. So these Horrific, catastrophic things are happening all the time. These two young men that we prayed for with families that died, that I just found out died. We don't know when we will be called. We don't know how we will be called. 
All we know is that we must be ready. We must take care of our business now. We must forgive all those people who we think hurt us or who don't like us. We must, yes, Beth. We must come. <laughs> we must take time to offer ourselves to others. In doing that, you can just feel all the negativity just be released from your body. Because that's what God wants us to live like. Loving, caring, joyful. Release any expectations you have of somebody else. They ought to be, and why didn't they, and how can they? Release all that. And know we have an opportunity to serve, to help, to comfort, to love one another. We do. So that when that day comes, that we go to the next level of life, of existence, we can do so joyfully. So as we go through Advent, knowing that Jesus is coming, know that we can come into being better human beings, better beings created by God, loving, caring, supportive beings created by God. May it be so. Amen. If you and should you need a church home, you are invited to join us here at Kelseyville United Methodist. Our closing song is Weave a Story to Tell to the Nations. It's number 368, but the words are right up here. Weave a story to tell to the nations. That shall turn their hearts to the right A story of truth and sweetness A story of peace and light A story of peace and light For the darkness turned to the dawning And the dawning to new day Thank you.